Hello and welcome to the Luxury Lounge. That's right, every Thursday we head in the lounge, we shut the door, and we air our grievances with the world. And there's no grievance that's too big or too small or too frivolous. The, the Luxury Lounge is here for you, the listener, to just scream to the heavens your problems with the world. And if you want your Luxury Lounge complaint read, send it to jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. That's jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. Title it Luxury Lounge. Tell us a little bit about what you're talking about, like this first one, Luxury Lounge Smokeless in Chicago. Great title. That's it. We're going to read it on the air. My guests and I, we will complain, complain, complain. Um, and listen, if you're out there, <coughs> I sort of cough right on you. Um, I got shows. I got shows. I got shows in different area codes. Area codes. Shows. Shows, I'm bringing the funny to your city. Shows, shows, Boston, Massachusetts, Minneapolis, Minnesota. I've never been to Minneapolis, so I'm excited to come to you. San Francisco, LA, Huntsville, Nashville, Springfield, Missouri. That is a new addition. Austin, Chicago, New York City, Dayton, Washington, D.C., Albany. All these shows, uh, there's stand up and you up live. So Boston's you up live, uh, LA's you up live, uh, Austin, Chicago, New York. Those are all you, you up live. The rest are stand up dates. I'm doing. I'm bringing the funny. So go to jaredfree.com for tickets. Jaredfree.com for tickets. I'm also. If you enjoy the luxury lounge, and you're like, I want to make sure I can get my complaint read on a weekly basis. The only way to do that is by joining the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Jared Freed. That's Patreon.com slash Jared Freed. It's $5 a month. Okay, $5 a month. And that gets you two extra podcasts a week. A week. There's Coffee with J-Train. This past Coffee with J-Train, I talked about uh, the passing of my friend Taffy. Um, I also talked about... um, Guns, as crazy as that sounds, I know that sounds like a, de- a departure from here, but just you know, my own thoughts as we all have thoughts. I don't think that they're they're not too. I mean, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but you know, from one person who doesn't know what they're talking about to another person who doesn't know what they're talking about, and then I talked about um, a story about um, a, a listener proposed to his girlfriend at my Tampa show. I tell the whole story, so that's Coffee with J Train, and then. The Luxury Lounge the, We do every Friday on Patreon You get a guaranteed reading of your complaints So patreon.com slash Jared Free to sign up um, Very excited Today's guest An OKP to the show Original key player I think his first time in the lounge My first time in the lounge First it's, time It's quite luxurious It is be- leather bound <laughs> books yes, A yes. fire We got the piano players no, Shelby and his mahogany. finest tux And <laughs> dinner jacket <laughs> Nimesh Patel Thank you for coming on Thanks for having me J Train It's a pleasure Thank you What's going on You have a special coming I have out. a so special You might know Nimesh From, from your scrolls on the TikTok mm-hmm. Do you have that You know, you blew up on TikTok I You did. got this huge audience mm-hmm. And a lot of TikTok, though, is like a passive audience. Yeah. You know, I know how I look at TikTok. I'll be like, I've seen that person. There's a guy I'm thinking of right now. I don't follow him, but I see him all the time yeah. because I watch his videos and I'm like, why don't I follow? Because that's I, And I hate that I don't. I'm actually going to do it the minute we end because I don't believe in that. I should be following this guy. He does like a comic book. I like love the Marvel movie, movies. Uh-huh. So like he always explains the Marvel movies from the comic book perspective. I'm like... Ah, oh, there's that nerd again. You know, like I see him all the time, and I'm like, but it knows you're a nerd too. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, 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 I'm going knows. to the king nerd. You know? The algorithm knows. The algorithm knows. Yes, sir. Do you have? Would you? You should give them names. Like these are like algorithm people. They're they're all victims of Chinese data mining to me. But thank, I love the name of the special is Thank You China. That's the name of the special. You taped it. You taped it here in New York. Taped it in New York, December twelfth, twenty twenty one. Um, it was a culmination of a year of touring, mm-hmm. like 60 cities, 200 shows. Um, some of my favorite jokes are on there. Okay. And it's dedicated to my grandpa who passed, but uh, I would not have been able to get the tour going had TikTok not taken off for me. Yeah. I you mean, know? that's the reality. You find these people, they, they see the 30 seconds, they go, I want the, the, I, the whole meal. I need the whole thing. Yeah. And that's that's how it worked out. You know, now I'm at 870,000 followers and counting. And, it's crazy. Uh, uh, hoping to grow. 
So that's the thing. The, you know, for the listeners at home, for people watching on YouTube, this is all an investment. This is a this is a business entity. You said I got the material, I'm going to tape it. You yeah. put your own money into it and now you're putting it out on YouTube. Yes, sir. So you can watch the full special on YouTube, Nimesh Patel at Finding Nimesh yes, on sir. Instagram at Finding Nimesh on TikTok, youtubecom Nimesh. Yep. You'll, you'll type in Nimesh Patel. I'm the first person that shows up. Yeah, there's there's Nimesh Patel, the comedian, then Nimesh Patel, the doctor, and anesthesiologist. Nimesh Patel, the, the, the <laughs> diamond company CEO. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen them all. So, but I'm the first one. Go on YouTube yeah. and subscribe. Don't be like me with the you know King Nerd. You got to go subscribe yep. to the YouTube channel, and then you're going to get all this free Nimesh, you know, like, you know, this is the world we live in, but you're going to be putting out clips on TikTok. TikTok and, and Instagram to promote, but uh, yeah, the whole thing lives on YouTube and I got to say, I think it's, it'd probably be the best produced special, mm. a bar none best produced special on TikTok for sure. Uh, I mean, on, on YouTube for sure. And then... Real from, money was put in. Yes, a lot. Was, <laughs> there was an actual investment. So that's why we need... You know, it, it is... It a luxu- it's a luxurious special. Well, that's the thing. You're putting in money and what bothers me, and this is a luxury lounge complaint from our end, is the people who don't admit to their follow being a currency uh-huh. or their like or their, you know, they're just subscribing to your YouTube channel. That's a, that's a, you're paying, you paid your way in. Yeah. A hundred percent. Those, those, every subscriber, every follower, every like, every comment counts because just feeds uh, the algorithm and that, keeps going just helps yeah. it grow and it's like a not a vicious cycle but where the opposite of that is uh, uh, a laughing cycle yeah, yeah a virtuous a, <laughs> a virtuous cycle well, that's, that's what right. it is. so what's the difference between a tiktok follower and everyone else like i know what a podcast listener is like at a uh-huh. show they're very they know you they they you know i i listen i know when someone listens to the podcast i can feel the connection they i've been inside you know i i believe a podcast is the most intimate art form yeah. we are in someone's head yeah, right now creepy. right now we are literally in someone's body yes we are inside of you while you're walking to wherever you're going or you're doing the dishes or you're doing your laundry make sure I, you smoke a cigarette after that's right ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, you were good. good today, that was kid. Good. That was yeah. Good. What do you leave, leave twenty on the dresser? What's a TikTok? Well, TikTok person? followers are, are an because, interesting. Well, group. before before you get into it, because everyone here, we are all TikTok followers. We're all podcast listeners. It's uh-huh. just what type of person do we become uh-huh. with the people that we follow? So I would. Well, see, the people that come out to the shows are very varied a like just diversity wise like it's tiktok gets fucking everybody mm. it's like 80 year old white people and like 20 year old indian people it's, okay it's a huge range but what i found and i've I'm, it at a point to ask almost every show <clears throat> like was it one particular clip that mm. did it for you or was it a span of clips if it was one clip which one was it and most of the time it's like one or two clips like yeah we'll go see this dude that's it that's it and then other people are like uh, we saw all of it. We just sat, we just sat there and just went through all oh, this. Shit is all great. Well, it's so funny. We know so little. We know you, you know we're sitting here and and you're saying at a, at a show you get a live opportunity to look someone in the eye and go, "How did you end up yeah, here? Why are you here? Why are you here?" And <laughs> they go, "Oh, you know, I like. I mean, I'll have people in the crowd. They're like, I, the the funniest to me is at a show. Someone will come up to me. It'll be like a." A couple, and I'll like, they'll, hey, great to meet you. And they'll go, we're charcuterie people. <laughs> and you go, wait a minute. All right. <laughs> Meats and cheeses. Yeah. That's what it, I, I go to open mics every night. I put out, you know, podcasts. We got, I'm putting up a, I have a studio inside my studio apartment. That's all it takes, man. And then you go yell at one charcuterie board and tell it it sucks. And they're like, this I got to go guy. see this guy. I got to go see this. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's wild, like how. One random thing that you just said on a podcast connected, connected. Like, oh, I got like people come out from back when Phoebe Robinson had her podcast. I did mm-hmm. a podcast like I don't know six years ago, people, and a lot of people come out because your podcast. Yeah, like, oh, I saw you on Jared Free's podcast. Mm-hmm. I was, I heard you on Jared, and I was like, that's crazy. Like, one thing connected with you, and now. You're here and but, you committed and, 30 bucks to come see me. Yeah, I guess. It, and it's weird that we are so shocked. We The, the plan came to fruition. Yeah, well, this is what, we, what you're doing this for. But I don't see that's like I follow like eight people on TikTok. Mm. It's you, a few other comedians. Yeah. And that's it. And that's only because I want to support you guys. Of course. But also because I know TikTok is like 
a black hole where once you're on it, you are Dude, oh, I, you're gone. I could be on it for like six Hours. days. I, I, this is why I have this beard. I've yeah. just been in a closet looking yeah. at uh, TikTok all yeah. week. It's, <laughs> it, will, it will turn you into like a, you'll have thumb arthritis just from sitting on there. And like I know even from someone who just posts and like reads comments mm. to make sure like my posts are going well. Like that is a time suck. Oh my god! So I, I can't mean, imagine what it is if you're like actually being entertained on there. Like oh, and then by the time you're done, your legs are numb. You've been shitting on the toilet for three hours. Well, you know? listen, make your legs numb with something different. <laughs> Go get subscribed to Nimesh's YouTube channel Please. at Finding Nimesh. Nimesh Patel. Just Google search Nimesh Patel comedian at Finding Nimesh on Instagram and TikTok. Uh, the special is amazing. I know it for a fact. It is so well produced it looks great it's perfect for a date night put it on your tv stream it to the tv watch it on the toilet do all the stuff let's go to the lounge yes. uh hit the music i'm gonna uh i'm gonna complain first hit the music shelby jared he has some problems uh-huh, it should be a very good series jared he's got some issues to do get off his chest right now Thank God you're a comedian. Yeah. Jared <laughs> has a lot of issues. Jared has a issue There's with not even a, a note in lot this. of <laughs> things that we can discuss. Can you relate, relate to, to the problem now? Jesus Christ. <laughs> you wrote this, Shelby? That was a, a J-Train original. <laughs> Now, okay, my complaint today, I was in Tampa Bay, I'm at a coffee shop, I'm holding my coffee, I'm sitting outside on their terrace, so to speak. This guy comes up, and he has a dog with him, no leash, okay? He sits at the table behind me with a woman. The dog is now around. Mm. So I'm sitting on my phone, coffee right here, all of a sudden, the dog his snout hits me right here. Mm-hmm. Right here. In that coveted armpit titty area. The armpit titty <laughs> area. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 You know, my tickle, immediate... Tickle zone. Well, but also, I'm looking this way at my phone. Snout hits me. I go, ah! Right. And then <laughs> I screamed. Uh-huh. Because, again, I'm not expecting to be touched. A wet nose on your fucking... Anybody. I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. The guy looks over and goes, they start laughing. Him and this woman start laughing. He, they go, oh, he's, he, he scared you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. An animal just nudged me uh-huh. out of nowhere. Of course I'm scared. Could have been a gator. It's fucking Could have been a gator. Because <laughs> it's Florida. <laughs> so I, I, go, I just go, and they go, oh, okay. And they just pull the dog back. No sorry, no apology. Uh-huh. And I go back to my day. Ten minutes later, the guy comes up to me and goes, Hey, man, she's a puppy. So next time, if that happens, don't worry about pushing her snout away. That's how she learns. Next time. I ain't teaching your dog. Next time. <laughs> I, am, I the, am I the dog trainer? Right. Am I the dog whisperer? Am I Caesar Milan? She's done What's it before. Going on? What do you, uh, how about you... Put your dog on a leash and hold on to them because they're a puppy and because they don't know better. Don't come up to me and start teaching me on how to teach the dog. He even said, he goes, yeah, I know some people don't feel comfortable touching another person's dog. Some people don't feel comfortable with their dog touching Touching a stranger. Yeah. White person? No. I wasn't going to make this about race. It's definitely a race thing. It's, def- <laughs> it's definitely a white dog. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't understand. Uh-huh. I, and, and it's like any feedback to dog people makes you hating dogs. Right. And it's not that. How about you are rude? You're a bad owner. You think you're a good owner because at some point the dog will be well trained. I'm sure of that. This person seemed to have a knowledge about how to train the dog. But you're putting it on me next time. When am I gonna? Are we gonna go on the road together? Gonna make sure we teach this dog a couple new tricks. He's gonna make her do it again so that you can teach the dog. <laughs> no, he's teaching but me how to teach the dog. It's gonna happen in about a few minutes. Yeah, uh, just letting you know. <laughs> next time. Next don't, time. Don't be such a little bitch. <laughs> well, yeah. And, well, the, it's just an insinuation that the, oh, the community is gonna take care of this dog. No, it's your fucking dog. Right. Not my responsibility. Not. And how about an apology? How about, hey, I'm sorry an animal just snuck up on you and embarrassed you in front of everyone. 
I'm screaming for my dear life. <laughs> Did he buy you a coffee? No. I, 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 and I looked at him, I go, yeah, I don't care. Oh. Like, I, I go, I don't care. I'm not here to teach your dog. Was it a, a luxurious dog? It was a nice looking dog. Yeah. It, it, it was bigger. I, you know, the idea that it was a puppy, I was like, this is a big dog. Uh-huh. Um, but it's just this, like, I, I, what happens with the dogs is you're the monster. They've put their whole thing on this dog and it's this like way for them to not have to be human beings it's kind of like uh someone with their kid who they just let run wild well, i think we're actually better with kids like if a if a kid came up and hit me yeah on the side you look at the kid and go no. no right let's go to nimesh's complaint i'm sorry that, that i'm sorry that that happened to you jared yeah i'm that thank you, got- you. Molested by a dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's the guest's turn to complain. They're point. ready to jump in. You're ready. They've got, got lots problems of too. problems oh, too. It ain't all about Jared. About Jared. Let's oh, hear God. their complaint of the day. Let's hear their complaint that, of the day. No. You can do whatever you They're want. They're in invited on the what, what, what show. What complain about whatever I want. Luxury is the ability to complain. complain. That's what the lounge is all about. You. Let's hear that complaint. I've been taking a lot of Uber Blacks lately, and uh, I gotta say, mm-hmm. love it. It's, I am up. I am. I'm just fanning off dollar bills yeah. to Ubers. Yes, it's uh, the it, lux when, on the Lyft. I do Lyft, but the lux, and especially when you travel, New York, I'll go bare minimum yes. Uber. New York, I trust it. Mm-hmm. I trust that these guys were former cab drivers. They know the city. They're doing it right. This is other cities. You got to go up a level, right? But in New York. When I get an Uber Black mm. or a Lyft Black, and a Infinity QX60 shows up, mm. I'm canceling. It's a bad day. It's a. I totally agree. It's not a luxurious vehicle. Nope. It should not be categorized as such. Nope. It is a not to knock a Nissan Pathfinder, but that's what this car is. It is a Toyota. Tell me the difference between that and the Toyota Rav Four. Not very much. No, it's this. They're like this. I mean, Toyota Infinity is Nissan's like luxury brand. Mm-hmm. So this is the, the Nissan whatever whatever their SUV version is. I think the Pathfinder or like the Murano, whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. But regardless, it is not a luxury vehicle. No, it doesn't. the The leg space is the the leg room is too small, and then it's usually usually. Uh, the people that are driving these cars put up that giant plastic divider. It's disgusting. The plastic divider, I don't know where they got it from. No, I don't know it's what. stapled in or with like three pieces of na- like nail. Yeah, it, and it came from a former school. Yeah. That everyone peed on it before it left. Prints on it and shit. You know, it, it is a form of Uber arbitrage. Yes. Because what they're doing is they got the cheapest available exactly luxury right. car yep. to get the most amount of dollars per ride. Yeah. Because then they can float. Mm-hmm. That same person can be can go up to luxury, mm-hmm. down to X. Yeah. And then and, the, and if they if they got the foldable seats one, they could mm-hmm. have an XL situation going yeah. on. And I got to tell you. It's not a luxury car. So I mean, I like Infinities. You're right. You know, but that's not a luxury car. And listen, I'm all for get the most out of your dollar mm-hmm. because that's what they're doing, but not at my expense. Correct. Like you are the pawn in this game. If it was you, you'd go, "Hey guys, you know what I got going? I got the cheapest luxury car, and I'm getting the most dollars per ride." That's yeah. why you see more of that car. I yeah. see that car a lot. All the, the fact time. that I knew right away, I know exactly what car you're talking about. I'm always disappointed yeah. when you get the Tahoe. Oh, Ooh, you, it's a new day. When you get sometimes I've been you're, lucky. You're Beyonce. You get the fucking the new Escalade or the new yes. Suburban with the captain seats. Even if I get a Toyota Highlander with the captain seats, I'm like. This is this captain, is the best. No, captain seat should be the minimum. Yes, it should be captain seat, or it is an Uber X. It yes. is a Lyft X. It, 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 the captain seat. If I'm alone in my chair, like I'm Captain Luke Picard, mm-hmm. we good. Yes, yeah. that's that's the distinguishing factor. You could a Toyota Highlander with captain seats should be a luxury car. You're totally right, and, and the, you almost wonder what the factors were. Is that that? Just because it's an infinity? Yes. I, I, you know, sometimes you get the Lincoln MKX. Yeah. 
fa- I'm a big fan. I love that. Didn't club. see that coming. No. I wasn't a Lincoln guy. I wasn't no. a, so comfortable. It's a great perch seat. It's oh, yeah. not a captain seat, but it is a very yeah, nice Yeah, they've got the little angle. thing in the middle. Yes. And you just sit and just chill out, and it feels like, all right, you're real low in the car. Here's the other thing. When they have the mat over the back seat, and then, you know when they have, like, you go in the back seat of an Uber and has that mat to protect it? The seat covers, yeah. The seat covers. Needs to go. Get them out of here. Because yeah. I like to put down the the armrest yeah. to put my coffee in the chair. I like to put the armrest down on top of that. On top of that, that, sure, it's protecting your leather. Mm. But as an ex driver, I mean, as a, a Uber black rider, I'm expecting leather. Yeah, no, you... I didn't come here Not like for like sticky fabric that moves no, 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 around. No, no, no. I didn't come here for the rags that your grandmother, you know, stitched together to protect the seat. I appreciate the protecting the investment aspect. This is, of but it. that's the thing. We are all left as the the losers here. Yes. And that's what they're saying. You know, oh, I got the inv- infinity. But when they when someone says they're getting a good deal, that is at the expense of the person that's riding in the car. Us. And then like if and then the seat the the passenger side seat isn't bro- pushed all the way up front, mm. you know, to, oh, yeah, yeah, to yeah, maximize yeah. the legroom. I'll ask, I'll ask, like, hey, come on, like, can, we, can I push the seat up? And the, every time they'll oblige, but a lot of times it's like in the QX with the with the plastic divider doesn't yeah. even do anything. It's it's hor- horrific. Um, <laughs> I can't believe <laughs> we're even bitch. dealing with this. <laughs> J-train I want to order podcast. a Camry, man. Well, welcome to the lounge. <laughs> J-Train Podcast at gmail.com. Keep titling it Luxury Lounge. Yeah, we're sponsor people. The J-Train Podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. You know, this is a good... I, I love the online world as a way into therapy. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, for someone that's been going to therapy for years and years, I don't know if BetterHelp is for you. Mm-hmm. The BetterHelp, to me, is for someone like me. Mm-hmm. You know how I am? I'm like, you know, I should do this. And then I Google once and I go, ugh, I'll do it next time. Yeah. Better help is for that person. Oh, I should find a dentist. Then you go, uh, whatever. Uh, who do I go to? How does it work? So you go to Better Help. Many people are bound, uh, are burned out without even knowing it. Symptoms can include, among other things, lack of motivation, feeling helpless uh, or trapped, detachment, and fatigue. I, I, burnout. This time of year, too, or through the winter, you're, you, you know, you've been working your ass off. What a what a great time for better help. We associate burnout with work, but that's not the only case. That's not the only cause. Most things in life can lead us to feeling burned out. And BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. Uh, talking with someone can help you figure out what's uh, causing stress in your life. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy. Give it a try and see if online therapy can help lower your stress. JTrain listeners get 10, 10, 10, 10% off the first month at betterhelp.com slash jtrain that's b-e-t-t-e-r-h-e-l-p dot com slash jtrain let's go to the emails you ready let's go to the emails luxury lounge smokeless in chicago jared and shelby hi shelby getting a shout aggressively writing this email from the waiting room of the urgent care where i they them pronouns am about to get drug tested and tuberculosis test for my new job as a teacher with chicago public schools cps Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a new listener to the pod from Two Hot Takes. The episode you did with Morgan had me dying of laughter. Well, thank you very much. We love Morgan here. I'm starting a Master's of Education partnership program with CPS. So that's Chicago Public Schools. So in addition to starting rigorous nightly grad classes in one week and studying for a state test I have to take in two weeks, I also have been in the midst of hiring shenanigans. I was sent my hiring paperwork three days ago, and they asked that you get drug tested, TB tested, and federal background check within six seven days of when they sent me the paperwork. I'm quite the stoner in my free time and have taken a one-week break during one of the most hectic weeks of the school year. Warm weather equals extra recess equals tired, crying kids in the part-time class I teach. I spent one hour this morning going through the repetitive instructions and paperwork for my drug and TB test and drove 30 minutes to the clinic this afternoon. And what do they say when I pull out my paperwork? Oh, we don't need that. We have our own paperwork that we do electronically. On top of that, I I had to pay $68 out of pocket to get the test done with no reimbursement. And I have to go back tomorrow to finish the TB because it's a multi-day process. And CPS no longer tests for THC. As confirmed by the technician administering the test, she laughed and said all the young teachers... 
Dude come in here stressed about testing for TS- <laughs> THC, LOL. <laughs> That's the most annoying part of the whole thing. But CPS doesn't tell you this, and it feels unprofessional to ask, even though it's legal recreationally here. So what if I had tested positive and then had to pay to take the drug test again? At least the test is fast, so I can confirm that I passed, yay. But damn, that was frustrating. Uh, thanks for letting me vent. E- eagerly anticipating the second part of my TB test. And they put in parentheses, not sincerely, your favorite stoned teacher. So this teacher is getting hired. They have to go get a TB test and a drug test Mm -hmm. all within seven days of the hiring process. What do you think? I think it's time to get high as fuck, man. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you you had a a great breakthrough that you didn't have to, uh, that you could smoke. That's the, but that's the most frustrating part of this whole email the Chicago public schools are like, you got seven days to get this drug test done or you don't get your job. So it's now this big squid game they put you through. And it's like, and then you get to the testing center and they're like, yuck, 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 you don't, <laughs> they don't even test for weed. It's like, tell me that before I go on this stressful journey to find other people's piss because I like to fucking smoke a blunt. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like the idea that they're laughing about this after the fact, and they're right. Yeah. Who's going to ask? Well, hey, we're just going to need you to get a drug test. Oh, do you test for weed because I'm a big stoner? Like, you I, don't wanna, I, that's your first entrance into the job? But I bet if, uh, uh, because it's legal recreationally there, that they, if the CPS was like, you can't smoke, mm. then they would have like a Supreme Court case. <laughs> well, but that's the thing. They're not saying you can't smoke. Right. They're saying we don't test for THC. Yeah. Great. I'd like to know that because the minute someone slides a drug test in front of me and uh-huh. it's like, hey, um, this is going to be whether you can pay rent or not. Right. You know, and then you go, well, then, you know, when, what, did, I smoke a, when did I smoke a fatty? Uh, I, I don't want to side with uh, anyone against teachers, but uh, <laughs> it's usually good to take a break from weed if you're <laughs> <laughs> just once in a while. Not, I don't mind the not, break. I know, I know teachers need to smoke because I have cousins who are teachers mm. and they both fucking smoke and eat mad weed because it's a super stressful job yeah but at the same time it's like it's good to have a break once in a while i'm not i'm down with the break what i'm not down with is not- adding the extra stress onto this yes you know hiring is a stressful process someone sh- it should say right on the thing don't worry have your gummies you're wink, good wink yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that's i mean that would probably require CPS to update all their paperwork to and say that ain't gonna happen. That's no. not gonna happen. I mean, Chicago public schools need a lot more work than just updating their fucking paperwork. So. J Train Podcast at Gmail dot com. J Train Podcast at Gmail dot com. Keep sending in your luxury complaints. Luxury Lounge title it Luxury Lounge, and then give us a little sauce of what it's about. We're here at Nimesh Patel at Finding Nimesh. Thank you, China. That's the name of the special. Thank you, China. Do you think that will help the algorithm? I don't know. Heard it? I don't know what it's going to do, man. I hope <laughs> I hope uh, China is listening. Man, I love China. Yeah. <laughs> China is the guy, best. Pro China. This, uh, listen, this is man, the first in the lounge, but you're allowed to say whatever you'd like. I've here. been all around this country, and I could tell you right now, we need some re-education camps that China's got going on. <laughs> oh, my God. Taking a hard stance. <laughs> yeah, I've been to China. Yeah. Have you been? No, I've never been. I've been. My I've mom been. went. She came back, said some very... Very not good things. <laughs> it's weird. It feels yeah. like, you know what China, China feels like? The Truman Show. Yeah. You're like, I don't know what's real and what's not. Like, I don't know if this is all in it. Because I was in Shanghai. And did, when you're in Shanghai. Did they treat you like a king? No, not particularly. I had a friend. So I did shows at a club that's now shut down, I think. Uh-huh. Um, and it was for expats. And I did these shows. And it was expats and what what was weird about the the men who moved to China seemed to move there because they wanted to date Chinese women. Of course. It, it, that was like very apparent uh-huh. and weird and creepy in a way. Yeah. I had a friend from college, we you know, friend. We we hadn't spoken since college. This guy got moved out to China to work for ExxonMobil. Oh shit. He said he was walking down the street and just sees my picture on the wall. Can you imagine what a out of body experience that must have been so cool right (laughs) yeah yeah. and he emails because we're not close he emails our mutual friend who's closer with me and him Uh he's like is that jared Fried? and is he a comedian like he had no idea amazing it was amazing and so he we went out and he um he was living there i think he moved back now but he came to the show we went out and he had a driver he had he was living in a american style built community for people who work out there so it's like 
and he was kind of saying like all this stuff is like Disney World. Like the front of the places look nice, but then behind them there's no you know, you're walking down Main Street on in, Emperor in has Epcot, no clothes. Right? Emperor's and it's, got no and clothes. I was like, Do you think you'll stay here? And he's like, The air quality, we can't have my kids here. Right. And I was like, It's I, to me, I was like, That can't be that bad. He goes, It's that bad. Yeah. And I was there during a very nice time. So yeah. you know, I'll say and the one thing about China, sometimes you walk down a street and it will smell and I was like I don't know if that's like the smell of bacon. Like if bacon was foreign foreign to me, uh-huh. I would be like, like I w- I would wonder what it smelled like to me. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like Vegemite. Like everyone in Australia loves Vegemite. Have you ever tried Vegemite? No, it's never. disgusting. <laughs> it's just not in your flavor profile because you weren't brought up with it. So I said to them, I go, I'm not sure if these streets smell bad to me and like bacon to you. Uh huh. But that's what makes you show. People say the world is small. I'm like, no, the world is fucking it's huge. Massive. People love. All kinds of gross shit. It's wild. I had a good time. I mean, I had a good time. I never have to go back. Yeah, I mean, I don't see the point in going ever. I don't think. <laughs> Except to thank them. For I mean, I'm thanking them from here. Luxury if, lounge. China, it, if you need me, I'm here for you. I'll learn Mandarin, but <laughs> only in the States. Internet recipe times. Jared, have enjoyed your podcast over the last several months, especially while I'm in the kitchen, which brings me to my complaint. I'm fairly new to cooking. Having spent my 20s and early 30s in the city where I didn't need a need or desire to cook regularly, I've enjoyed this new experience and the countless blogs out there to help me along. However, these websites do not present an accurate representation of how long it takes to get a dish to the table. The time it takes to prep and measure ingredients is severely underestimated and it regularly takes me double the time estimated to finish a meal. Uh, I know I'm still a newish cook, but come on, let's present a more accurate recipe, which includes time to dice an onion, cube chicken, and measure all the spices. Thanks. What do we think? Get better knives. Is that you? Think the <laughs> knives are taking the double the time. No, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I totally agree with this person. Yeah. You know what? I don't like anyone that writes in the culinary world. Uh-huh. The culinary world, and it's culinary. I, I understand. Let me say it right. Culinary. There. Have you ever read? I mean. Everyone in the food world doesn't understand that we need info. Yeah. We don't want your glowing tale of a trip to Italy and the first time you had a good ragu. No. Give me, give me the time to cook. Give me the amounts. Give me the ingredients. Give me the, you know, the, the, the parts I'm going to have to look out for, where mistakes are made. I've read a lot of recipes where, or been on a lot of websites where the recipe is all the way at the bottom. This is my point. And uh, uh, it takes longer to read the tale behind why their yeah. grandma made this special dish. And, <laughs> I and hate ha- that and, so much. And how it helps you connect with that one time your whole family came over and you had the best fucking meal ever. It's like, it's tell me. All these people. How many cloves of garlic. Exactly. Make one it's thing. all the way at the end. And then there's ads. And you're like, is that it? Yeah. All these food bloggers were too afraid to tell their parents they wanted to be creatives. So they had to do it under the guise of, oh, I write about food and I give ingredients. And then they bring you in with their stupid story and their tale. Uh, you know what else this happens? With food reviews. I'm a huge fan of the Infatuation. Infatuation okay. has a great app that you can find cool spots to go to in a town that you're in. Mm-hmm. Every review. Have you guys ever played mario kart growing up and you're like get the fuck out of here with your comedic take <laughs> I don't on need your after school snack story yeah i want to get me to the goods was it good what should i get what time of day to go yeah are there chicks there done boom j train podcast you gotta Jay-Train write some you gotta write some food reviews luxury lounge unnecessary plain food mm Jared, coming at you with a luxury complaint as I sit on the tarmac waiting to take off. I'm flying to London from the East Coast, and they keep making announcements about how there will be both dinner and breakfast on this flight, even Mm -hmm. though it's only a a six-and-a-half-hour flight. Normally, I'm all for airplane food. But this flight takes off at 10.30 p.m. Why is this necessary? We're going to have a late dinner. Uh, Who wants to eat shitty baked ziti and chicken from American Airlines in the sky at midnight? Didn't you just indulge at the airport and can wait until breakfast? All I wish is they'd give us a nice midnight snack or dessert and let us all go to sleep instead of stinking up the plane. Am I the only one who feels this way? Thanks for letting me air my complaint. I love this complaint. That's a good complaint. Right? I mean, but I appreciate it. I think it's a luxury to have food given to you at any time. Two meals. Yeah, I fucking love that shit. Well, here's what they're trying to do. 
what the airplane is trying to do is get you on the time of the place you're going. Ah. So they're trying to say 10.30 dinner. No, 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 no. That's not 10.30 dinner. They're saying it's 6 Six o'clock or wherever. It's, it's dinner time wherever you're going. Mm-hmm. So they're trying to get you in the... But to me... They ain't fixing the issue. You're still going to be tired. It's still going to be 1030 to you when it's you gonna get there. It's going to smell in first class. It's still going to smell. I agree with this person. Let's switch up the snacks. Give us, uh, give me a bowl of popcorn. You know, I want a midnight snack. Give me, give me something that I would make in the kitchen when I'm a little bit hungry before bed. Give me a bowl of popcorn. Give me something, you know, uh, an ice cream sundae. Something, a pint of ice cream. Turkey sandwich? Turkey sandwich. Let, let's keep it simple, people, and treat me like an adult. You don't have to try and trick me. I'm not a child who's going to go, oh, I guess it is dinner time. No. And I don't want no British breakfast. No, I, yeah, I don't want your banger Bean, and ha- eggs. Beans and yeah, bread. Yeah, yeah, don't give me a, that <laughs> fucking fart meal they served you in England. No, Here you go. It's quite the treat. Shut yeah, the fuck up. Gravy at 8 a.m.? Yeah, what Get are you out of here. talking about? Yeah, no, give me an actual bacon and eggs like an American. Yeah, I'll, 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 the, the, <laughs> England starts in the airport, yes. not on the plane. This is American Airlines. Yes. You understand? <laughs> J Train Podcast at gmail.com here with Nimesh Patel at Finding Nimesh. Go right now. Watch the special. Go pause this. Go on YouTube. Search Nimesh Patel. Get the special. Just have it in your queue, and you'll be ready to go. Thank you, people. China. It's called Thank You China. <laughs> I do not endorse the Thank You China. <laughs> MeUndies wants to help make the summer the most comfortable one uh, you'll never forget. Because when you're living your best life, uh, the last thing you want to do is worry about butt sweat. I gotta say. I love MeUndies. I'm a huge fan of this company. I, you know, I'm a fan of any purchase that improves your life. Hmm. And that's what new underwear does. Because look, it, we're all hard on ourselves. We don't even realize how hard we are on ourselves. I'll give you an example. You have a pair of underwear that you are dealing with. You wear it when the laundry's basket's full. That pair of underwear you should never have to deal with. You should never have to have this Sophie's choice of, oh my God, I got no underwear. I guess I have to wear old red. No, get rid of old red. Throw it away. Be good to yourself. It's Join em- me undies. It's emergency me undies. That, and that's the thing. We're refreshing the underwear carousel. Take one off the back, throw it in the garbage, get a new me undies. And how, they come in great colors and all sizes. And how flavors. often do you refresh your underwear? Every month. Every every month you throw yeah, out underwear, you buy new underwear. Me, me, that, that, they have you can sign up to be a MeUndies member, and they'll mm. just send them to you. Mm. MeUndies has a great offer for my listeners. For any first time purchasers, you get fifteen fifteen percent off fifteen percent off. If you sign up for their free to join membership, you get twenty five percent off your first membership item. That's a lot of money, people. To get fifteen percent off your first order, twenty five percent off your first membership item, and a hundred percent satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies dot com slash JTrain. That's MeUndies dot com slash JTrain. MeUndies dot com slash JTrain. MeUndies dot com slash JTrain. Luxury lounge. Naked ladies in the sauna. For it. <laughs> Is that the game we're playing? At, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess if I was in the sauna and yeah. a naked woman walked in, I wouldn't be too upset. Yeah, yes. <laughs> but let's see. Share it. <laughs> and guess. My best friend brought the group chat to your show a couple weeks ago. We are all now in love with the luxury lounge. Thank you for your service, LOL. Okay, so about four days a week, I go to the LA Fitness by my apartment. This is a pretty average gym. It has your usual cardio equipment and free weights, a pool, and saunas in each locker room. Here's my issue I like to take 10 to 15 minutes before my workout to chill in the sauna. Before? I mean, that's bold. That's crazy. Yeah. Before? That's nuts. What are you doing? Maybe I don't know. Are they, are they, <laughs> That's my complaint. Who that, goes to the sauna before their work? Is that new sauna? After, science? like, to me, the, the sauna is the cherry on top of yeah. the workout. Like, that's what you get to look forward to. Yeah, it feels like you actually worked out once you... You earned it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'll go with them. 
Uh, I like to take 50, 10 to 15 minutes before my workout to chill in the sauna, finish my pre-workout, listen to some J-Train. Well, that's a good move. Um, probably every other time I'm here, an older woman will walk in naked, fully naked. This is not just one person either. It's like there's a whole cohort of older ladies who think it's fine. I get that you want to hang in the sauna after your water aerobics or whatever, but like, can you at least put on a towel? I should clarify this is a dry sauna. Oh, my God. Not a steam room. Most of us are in here fully clothed. Clothed? This, this, I don't this, understand. This sauna, the clothed in a sauna? What are you doing? These group, this group of naked ladies is complaining about this person. Yeah, why is there, <laughs> why is there a woman in here in her sneakers? Yeah, <laughs> she's listening to some podcast. <laughs> there was a woman in jeans in the sauna. Yeah. <laughs> what, what is, is she doing? Everyone's wrong here. Yes, everyone is wrong. The, the emailer and listen, I know you're in the lounge, but I, oh, you two adults are here going. What are you doing? This process seems off. This is like from the. This is from like a, the, you know the upside down world. Yeah, Twilight Zone, <laughs> L.A. Fitness. I should clarify: this is a dry sauna, not a steam room. Most of us are in here. Most of us are in here fully clothed. So even just being in a towel is pushing it. I have no understanding of this. I'm all about women's empowerment, but there's a time and a place for aggressive nudity, and it's not the gym sauna. Thanks for letting me vent. What do you think? Well, first, of I all, think I'm more on. The, if it's between fully clothed and naked, I'm on naked side. I'm, I'm sorry on, to say it. I side with droopy titties <laughs> every time. <laughs> well, that's that's the real complaint. Yes. Don't come in here with your old body yeah. and ju- and make us have to deal with the 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 thought of. Time is coming at us quickly. We yeah. all, you know, you're facing us. We're now face to face with our own future. You don't want to see skin drier than the wood in the sauna. You know what I mean? It's just sitting there, <laughs> stuck making all that <laughs> noises yeah. on the fucking. On the, I, I, I've been to LA Fitness saunas. They're not that big, so no. it's a it's a tight spot to be in with a gaggle of old naked women. <laughs> I'm on. If it's the steam room, I'm cool with naked. I don't like naked at all. Really? No, I think. But I mean, I don't. I'm not. Uh, I'm not gonna be like. Ugh. I'm just be like. All right. I'll internalize that discomfort yeah. and I'll make sure I spend a little less time in there. Well, sometimes you get guys though going to the sauna and they're naked stretching. Yeah, they're like, take a look at all the nooks ball, and crannies. Balls hanging low. Yeah. It's like, all right, we get it. Enough, man. dude. You're we comfortable and you've given up. I uh, think there's something to when you're married. And you have so little room for self exp- expression that this becomes <laughs> the fairgrounds yes. for it. You're just like, you know what? I am me. I'm gonna let the freak flag fly. I go naked in the dry. Gray naked in the dry everywhere. sauna is as weird as clothed in the dry sauna. 100%. There's got to be an in between. The towel makes sense to me. Wrap the towel around you. Take a seat. <laughs> look at everyone in the eye. How you doing? How you doing? Goodbye. Here's my solution for the complaint. Go home. Mm. Print a sign. Mm-hmm. Towels only. Post, post post it up there. No one will take it down. Yeah, put an you're LA Fitness LA, logo yeah, on the bottom. Yeah, you, you're in an LA Fitness. Yeah. They don't even check in there. They're not even cleaning it. Yeah, yeah. They don't care. J Train Podcast at Gmail dot com. J Train Podcast at Gmail dot com. Here with Nimesh Patel at Finding Nimesh. Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Yes, sir. The king of TikTok. Chicken. TikTok masala. Nimesh. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. That's me. Chicken TikTok masala. Love- <laughs> Speaking of chicken TikTok masala, (laughs) Uh luxury lounge, delayed wedding. Hmm. I know. Okay. I was just at your wedding. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming. I came. Thank you for the Beautiful time. Thank you. Great wedding. Did I get you a gift? I think you did. You got some cash, I believe. I don't think I did. I'm a late giver. Oh, well, if you didn't, I don't bring it. I will. Well, then I think checks in the mail. Thank you in advance. Yeah. I thought you (laughs) did. If you didn't, you know, it's fine. No, I don't think I did. It's coming. Well, whatever. Would you rather? Does it bother you to get a late gift? I don't care at all. I don't. I, it, right? Uh, I've I've definitely forgotten wedding gifts. Yeah. So, oh, I have. So it's, so apologies to anyone that's <laughs> listening or any of my friends whose wedding I've been to. I forgot to get you something. Um. But so I don't really pay attention to it. So Nimesh was married three times. Trace. You had three weddings. Explain each wedding. We were supposed to get married in March of 2020. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in our Indian American ceremony is supposed to be in March of 2020. Yeah. And our American ceremony is supposed to be in May of 2020. Obviously, okay. uh, something happened. Mm. Um, uh, <laughs> a little pandy wandy, as Chris yeah. DeStefano would call That's it. That's right. And sniffles uh, went around. Yes. And uh, so we had to delay. Well, we thankfully delayed the March one, the Indian one, because 
uh, my wife and I both got COVID like a week after. Mm. So had we had that March, you been a super spreader. It would, we would kill like every Indian in New Jersey for yeah. sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now the, the Indian American one—that's uh, the one with the three days and like the the four hour walking around a fire thing. Okay. So we had we were going to do that, and then that got pushed because it, our wedding was supposed to be like four days after New Jersey shut down. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the American was supposed to be May of 2020. That got pushed until. April of this year, mm-hmm. um, and so we got married legally on our roof of June 2020 because my grandpa was super old and wanted to make sure that he saw me get married before he passed away. Mm-hmm. Um, so we did that, and then the Indian one got pushed till November 2021 because mm-hmm. what ended up happening was everyone that had their weddings delayed, the instant shit opened up again, everyone booked everything right away. It was our, yeah, and now you're dealing with the people that it changed it and the people who were doing 2021 Exa- anyways yeah. exactly and then we had to you know you know talk uh, thankfully i didn't do a lot thanks shout out to my mom my sister and my wife and uh uh and the vendors that like mm-hmm. were so accommodating but like my sister my mom my wife like ended up on the phone with like every vendor mm-hmm. trying to reschedule everything and making sure it all worked and the only dates that worked were like november 2021 for the indian one and then April 2022 of this year for the American. Man, a wedding planner must see an Indian come to their door and just go, oh, the money oh, truck's coming in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> seven day you know, event. These, these planners, they're worth every penny. Yeah. And like the day of, people are worth every penny, but what a lot of pennies that is. A lot of it's pennies. a lot of pennies. Well, let's go to this one. Luxury Lounge, delayed wedding. Longtime listener, a friend of mine has informed our friend group that they will be having a wedding ceremony and reception next summer on average four hours away from our friend group. Only problem is they were scheduled to host their wedding in 2020 and ended up having a private ceremony that summer. Essentially, they will have been married for three years and are now rehashing it after the fact. Can't we just move on and not add another wedding to our schedules just so they can have a party out of the way for everyone? What this, do you think? this sounds like, uh, is this about me? I don't know. I, it might <laughs> be. Someone, yeah. someone cool. <laughs> I, need a, I need a name of this fucking Wait, person. Right? Very honest email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know anyone that came pr- four hours away unless they were like stuck it's, in New Jersey traffic. But, this uh, person, the problem is the four hours. Yeah. And, and here's where I would agree. I, I oh. if you sh- What I liked about your wedding was that all the, the pomp and circumstance, is that, am I saying that wrong? Pomp, no, yeah. pomp, pomp and circumstance, yeah. yeah. Was shooken off. Mm-hmm. It was a two minute ceremony. <laughs> it was. It was literally a two minute ceremony. <laughs> It was cocktail hour, and get the fuck out of there. Let's start dancing. Yep. And there were a couple speeches, but everything just kind of went. And speeches were great. And the speeches were great. Yes. And your sister did a great job. Uh, Amy's dad did a great job. It was fantastic. You, you know, the, the, the pep boys, the Indian pep boys that came up. <laughs> the pep boys and <laughs> yeah. my cousins. Nimesh had a, a quintet of cousins. Yes, that sir. Just, yes, sir. Just went size down. Yep, it, was just, yep, it just yep. looked like um, like haircuts on the uh, Indian uh, super barbershop cuts, yeah. wall. Oh, that one yeah yeah, yeah, yeah for so, sure <laughs> but they were all great but what i loved about it was like it wasn't uh, you know things weren't suited up no. it was very much top button undone let's have a fun time 100%. and that's the that to me that is why people should have multiple weddings yes have your grandma's dying grandpa's dying wedding yes you know have that one on a roof where everyone holds grandpa's hand yeah, and yeah. we don't have to like you know work our way around him uh-huh Get that out of the way. Get wrinkles out of here. Yeah. <laughs> then, <laughs> then have the fun wedding yeah. where we we dance through pa- this whole thing. Party and, and do and, drugs. And what this person is right about, don't make it four hours away. Yeah. Make this. Yours was in Brooklyn. I took an Uber. Ubered home. Slept in my own bed. Yeah. It was a beautiful night that ended with me cuddled up in my own bed having a great old time. So yep. that's what I'm talking about. If you're going to do the multiple weddings... Make the one that, you know, make them shake out all the shit we don't want to do. Exactly. I mean, that was kind of what we didn't want. A, a huge thing is also, I mean, I don't know if this is uh, uh, relatable to this person mm. and the person getting married is like, we didn't want to lose the deposit. Yeah. It's a huge amount of money. And so, so you, if you ha- move it along. <laughs> yeah. You, you keep the deposit. You still have to yeah. do it. You okay. know what I mean? Otherwise you lose that shit. But on top of that, it's like all this built up. Like, oh, we're going to have a fucking party. Mm. Is That's the only thing that's left. Yeah. And you're like, all right, well, it it's like, we're going to feed you. 
you're going to have a great time, mm-hmm. you're going to dance, and you're going to be close to where you want to be. So like yeah. the four hours thing is, is annoying. That's the annoying That's part the annoying because part. you're like, oh, man. And what this couple's doing is they're like, you know, they're trying to pop the balloon that's uh-huh. been blown up over all these years. They yeah. still have, like, just like you said, like, there's this payoff of yeah. like we're having our party so that we can move on in the timeline of life. Yes, exactly. It's such a, it's such a, a fun thing. Like, I, I didn't expect like I thought it was gonna be fun, but I didn't expect to have as much fun as I did. It's great. Time. It was a great time. Great wedding. Thank you. Podcast at gmail.com. We got time for one more. Go to your friend's wedding. J Podcast at gmail.com ooh I like this last one we got one more time for one more two more we got time for two more look at that okay let's do it luxury lounge audiobook voices ooh Papa JT, I have a luxury lounge complaint I think you'll appreciate. It turns out that I can't be left alone with my own thoughts and was constantly plowing through all of my podcasts in desperate need of more. A friend recommended I try audiobooks since there are usually eight plus hours of content. My main gripe with audiobooks is that most of them have the same narrator doing every single character in the books. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. Yeah. I mean, at least try and make up a, a voice. Like, I would like to see the same narrator, but they have to come up with the voices. Of course. That's fun. Um, often making... Oh, so they so they do do that. Uh-huh. Doing every single character in the books. Often making ridiculous voices to portray a child, an old man, and strong accents. I'm coming on... Uh, I'm counting on you to do some exaggerated voiceovers of a woman pretending to be a deep-voiced man. It becomes so distracting to hear this one person try to play like 10 people. <laughs> See, that's the fun of it to me, yeah, but I understand. Um, can we not uh, up the budget to have one more person doing the ho- more feminine characters and another for the more masculine characters? How low budget is this audiobook that it has to be a one-woman show? Jared, I know you aren't much of a reader, so I'm sorry to report that this may not be the best avenue for you either. Thanks for the uh, safe space, XO. Yeah, I'm not a big reader. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe she should stop reading, uh, listening to Harry Potter <laughs> books. <laughs> and Dumbledore came down the mountain. I have a wizard tale to tell. Yeah, this is- <laughs> it's probably just and J.K. Rowling. And the children Rowling. came in. Hi, Dumbledore. Yeah, like that would That's be pretty annoying. good. It's pretty good, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate I, it. But it would be annoying. Like. I can understand where you're like, oh, that's your kid, that's your Dumbledore, that's your, you know, that's your parrot. Well, a lot of these, <laughs> a lot of these uh, <laughs> book narrators aren't necessarily actors and actresses; True. they're just professional voice people, which is a very similar skill, but uh, still different. Well, professional voice person is like having a listenable voice. Yes, it's not necessarily an active. You know, showman voice. But having You're done, right. having done voice work, I can tell you that it requires a tremendous amount of skill just to differentiate between two things. Really, and like they, this person should appreciate the talent that this person is reading is putting. It's so fucking hard. It's like it's damn near impossible. You did a cartoon. I did a cartoon where yes. I voiced where I voiced a pansexual tiger. Yes, and a bee. I remember the tiger because the tiger, you did a very... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you? Me? Yeah. The I, tiger was very... Um, it felt like you did a... It was a... a, a it, it was a turn on the evil lion from the Lion King. Yes. It was that... What's his name? Scar. Uh, Scar, yeah. It felt like you were doing Scar, gay Scar. Gay Scar was like one of the inspirations for yeah, that's sure. What I- <laughs> yeah, I just, I'm happy. W- well, I, I, you achieved the gay Scar because that's what I th- felt like I was there. And then I did a, there was a, I think in one of the episodes that we did, we did three episodes. One of the episodes I had to pay like, I uh, play a, a very high pitched B. Okay. Hey, everybody. Come on, man. Oh, I'll fuck you up, man. I'll fuck you so up. That's no the B. Yes, that's me. That's me, the B. But like I can do that. It's but so it, weird to see that voice come out of your mouth. If you're watching on YouTube, you're getting a show right now. It's so fucking hard to do. Yeah. So if someone is doing that eight, nine times, like the skill required is like you'd have to be okay, you know, Hank Azaria. The, well, that's the thing. That's where you go. Hank Azaria is like a talented guy. That's, I know he requires he, a lot of work. He's your people's enemy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> Fuck you, Hank. <laughs> You heard me? <laughs> I know. You know, no, 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 Jewish no. people have Hitler. Right. The Indian, Indian people, people have Hank Azaria. Azaria. So, if I go back in time, 
<laughs> baby Hank Azaria. Baby Hank Azaria is. <laughs> so give me different characters. Let's see if I could differentiate. Like if you gave me, give me a background. Shelby, let's name some characters that we can do. Let's, let's, can you do. Baby Hank Azaria? Yes. Baby Apu. Uh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> let's get Jerry canceled by Quickie Andy. Quickie shop, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I can't, I see. Like it's that's what I'm saying. It's so yeah, fucking yeah. hard. Well, give me a character. We, 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 we have a. Two. How about a? Uh, I guess in Hank Azaria's defense, every voice becomes somewhat racist. Yes, for sure. If you're playing a race, and I guess if you're playing a, a race, if, you're, if it's a caricature of yeah, that race, then that, that's the, fair. It has to be racist by definition. How about a? Uh, uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> how about a, a Monopoly man? Is that what's underneath there? What's underneath? Under, underneath the crown? No, underneath the crown is actually two Jews. Um, oh, well, I mean, you could do that. Easy. Reading the paper. <laughs> oh, See that? But I guess that's racist. That was anti-Semitic. I, don't, I wouldn't consider that. But that's I, not anti-Semitic no. at all. It, uh, hey, look. Oh, we're reading the paper. How about... Um, Grimace. Uh, Grimace? Uh, Grimace the hill? The yeah, the purple hill. You know, that's a hill. He's you know, hill? Grimace... Uh, the, the, Google Grimace... It's is a, a hill? purple hill. That's how high out, out of your mind high was that person? Be like, hey, let's have a hill that That's has a face on it. What's that got? What's that to do with fucking McDonald's? I have no clue. The hamburger. Yeah, hamburger. I came for your burgers. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Is that what they sound like? I don't Grimace, know. Grimace. Hey. Because I just imagine a hill looking like a dot. Sad. Deep. Hey, who ate my burgers? I'm Grimace. <laughs> how about how about a female fisherman? Female fisherman. Female fisherwoman who's who's just hooked something. Okay. Doesn't have the strength to reel it in because she's a woman. She's missing <laughs> she's missing <laughs> an arm. <laughs> missing an arm? Yeah, okay, so armless hero. fisherwoman. Yes. It's hard. <laughs> this is hard. It's so self conscious. So self conscious. And you're like, I, I have Give to Give me that. Hey, give me that. Give me some help with the line. That's good. I need some help. That, Come on, mates. You sound, Get to the after the ship. You sound like a school bus driver, but it's, okay, it's okay. there. Okay, it's, see, it's, the, you know, we're trying here. We're, so, we're spitballing. We write to edit. So all that to say that this person who is complaining about... It's a, it's a hard job. It's, it, a, it's a very hard job. It uh, also would amp the budget not just for hiring someone well the the, the, the cost would be turned over to you your book your your yeah. your eight dollar audiobook is now a 16 dollar yeah book, which you would you pay that should, that's really the solution mm-hmm. is give us options mm-hmm. you get the full cast or you get the one dumbledore yeah you want some like my friend sahib has a joke about it like uh if you if you can't afford Audible, you get Scribd or whatever. Okay. And Audible, it's like the author reading the book, but in mm. Scribd, it's like his joke goes, it's just some guy <laughs> in between DoorDash runs. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> exactly. So Harry Potter went to the uh, Prince of Azkabar. Okay, well, hold on, I'll be right back. I yeah. gotta go make a delivery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's pretty funny, but like that's what it is. Up your life. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. We got one more email. Do it. Here with Nimesh Patel at Finding Nimesh on all platforms, but especially YouTube. We want you to watch the special. It's called Thank You, China. It's a spectacular special. It is well produced. Lots of money, lots of time, lots of effort. Toward the whole country, practicing it, ready to go for the bigger masses. You mm-hmm. know, this is what it's all about. Yes, sir. Luxury Lounge, Bikini Bodybuilder Woes. Okay. J Train, Feather Feather, I have a very specific complaint. I am a new bikini bodybuilder, Mm -hmm. meaning a strict diet, six days a week at the gym, a coach, and a high degree of discipline needed for a minimum of 16 weeks pre-show. This sport is fraught with luxury complaints, but here are a few. One, the diet. But not what you think. This sport is rather extreme to get stage lean. Tons of people in my life have been asking me how I lost the weight, roughly 25 pounds, picture included. So here's a before and after. Oh my God. Goodness. That's a lot of weight to lose. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. She looks great. I mean, but I understand that this isn't a normal 20, like she didn't need to lose 25 pounds. And then she gets into lean shape for the show. Mm-hmm. And it's a, this is a, like the idea that her weight loss could be 
relatable to me is crazy. Right. 25 pounds in that amount of time is ridiculous. Tons of people in my life have been asking me how I lost the weight, but more specifically want the exact meal plans my coach made for me. Not only is it annoying that I paid for this service and now they want just want it for free, but I also now I have to but all, I also now I have to go into the detailed explanation of how that worked for me is how what worked for me is specific to me and might not work for you. Yeah, this isn't to say what did you eat. Yeah, there's so much that goes into it. This is a rigorous process. Yeah, this is a job. Yeah. <laughs> Two, nothing fits. With having leaned out for stage, stage pictures attached. We saw the stage pictures. None of my clothes fit. Some competitors have on and off season clothes, but that seems a bit ridiculous to me. One, who has the closet space? And two, who has the money? They should have a line of clothing like maternity wear that are adjustable for competitors on and off season. Three, Maybe that's a business for her to start. Mm-hmm. If there's enough so, people that do good. this competitive thing. And a meal plan business. Yeah. Three, p- posing practice at the gym. Not only are clear heels required in the sport. That's insane. That's, <laughs> Who was in charge? It's just one dude with a cigar. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, that's a nice heel. Clear heels <laughs> with fish in the heels. Yeah. He, uh, she writes, pseudo-conservative stripper heels. See video attached. Do we have the video? No, it's not worth it. Okay. But my gym doesn't allow use of the private fitness classrooms outside of group exercise. What that means for me is posing on the very busy gym floor and garnering plenty of watching eyes and questions, which leads me to my last point. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be doing those poses in public. I I don't even like looking at myself in the mirror in public generally. No. Four, no longer an anonymous gym goer, having to work out six days a week for 18 plus weeks has meant that my once anonymous gym solace has been robbed by people coming up and asking what I'm doing, etc. Oh, now you're the pro. Mm -hmm. They want to know, well, what can I take from you? It's brain drain in a certain way. I'm grateful for the support, but I, like you, gym goer, have places to go and things to do and just want to get back to my already hour long workout. This added chit chat unnecessarily extends my already long gym session not to mention pushes off my meal times. Please just let me finish so I can eat my fish and asparagus in peace. Can't a smile and a wave suffice, folks? Sincerely, uh, yeah. No complaint is too small, but my waistline is getting to be. What do we think? First of all, keep the effort up. You look good. Mm. Uh, invest in some noise canceling headphones to say fuck you. I would get the big headphones. Yeah. You got to get, that's what they need to get. The comically huge ones mm-hmm. that you have to literally go, sorry, couldn't hear you, and lift off of your ear. That's the only way out yeah, of yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. And they got to say, don't talk to me. Yeah, they on the side. I'm, I'm, I'm a work in progress. Yeah, yeah. Your work zone. Exactly. <laughs> Stay clear. You got to no, look because like. Because you have to do the, excuse me, because the small headphones don't ward people off no, enough. No, they don't. They're not enough on a warning side. They're, no. Oh, you can just go like this. No, you got to no. get the. This on, you got to wear a hoodie. You got to look like Mickey Mouse. Exactly. Yeah. You got you to put some ho- hoodie shit on. Yeah, it's time to start wearing resting bitch attire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> resting bitch attire. Yeah, because I understand what they're saying. Like at the gym, now, if you're, and especially if they're six days a week, you have men there. Men are looking to talk to women. It doesn't matter. I Do men this, talk to women at the gym? Oh, my God. Does men it? will talk to women no matter what. I guess you're right. I, I had this issue... I go to the field to work out. I go work out in the field, and I do these out here, out on the West Side Highway. Uh-huh. And I go out and I do a four zag workout. The four zag workout, forty four minutes, beginning to end. I'm done. Mm-hmm. I have the headphones in. I'm on the forty four minutes. I don't want to stop it. Right. Sometimes I'll see someone I know, and they're like, "Hey, what's going on?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm in the middle. This is going. Right. Like, I don't want to pause this. I want to be. I want to do. I want to get out. Part of the workout." Is doing it the within the forty-four minutes. Exactly. Yeah, it's not stopping and taking a half-hour break. Can't rest. That no, changes your heart rate up. J Train Podcast at Jim dot com. Nimesh Patel, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. Luxury Lounge. Thank Everyone, you very go much. follow Nimesh at Finding Nimesh. But also the special. Go watch it. Please. Go enjoy it. It's fantastic. You're gonna love it. I'm Jared Freed. We're here every Thursday in the lounge. Keep sending your emails. J Train Podcast at Jim dot com. We'll be back next episode. Boom. <laughs>